As swiftly as they arrived, the Vikings departed, leaving behind tales of mystery in the vast expanse of North America. The narrative spoke of uncharted lands and unfamiliar tribes, known only by the enigmatic name Skraelings. This intriguing chapter unfolded in the year 1000 AD, a time when the Americas had been secluded from Eurasia for nearly 12,000 years. On each side of the Great Divide, civilizations thrived in isolation, completely unaware of each other's existence. Almost half a millennium before Christopher Columbus set sail, the Vikings embarked on multiple journeys to the Americas from their homelands in Greenland and Iceland. However, these expeditions were far from peaceful. Welcome back to History Roar, where we delve into the Viking fingerprints scattered across North America, exploring their clashes with Native Americans and the puzzling disappearance that followed their arrival. Also consider to like, subscribe and turn on post notifications because it helps a lot, and we have more stories in our channel for you to check. Around 980 AD, the indomitable Eric the Red spearheaded a movement to colonize Greenland, driven not by choice, but necessity. A wild man banished from Iceland for three years due to a fateful incident. Eric strategically named the inhospitable Greenland to entice settlers. Thousands of Vikings answered the call, making Greenland their home. The winds of fate then whispered tales of strange lands to the west, carried by a merchant sailor who had strayed from the usual course between Iceland and Greenland. This captivating narrative reached Eric's son, Leif Erikson, and ignited the flame of curiosity. In the year 1000 AD, Leif Erikson set sail with 35 men to uncover the truth about the mysterious land. The expedition, navigating through uncharted waters, eventually led them to what is believed to be Newfoundland. Here, amidst the rugged landscapes, Leif's foster father, Tiger, was said to have indulged in the intoxicating allure of wine berries. It's speculated that Tiger's inebriation may have resulted from consuming fermented cranberries, gooseberries, or squash berries, all of which thrived in the region. Despite the allure, Leif and his crew's stay was fleeting, leaving no documented encounters with Native Americans during this initial venture. While the sagas remain silent on Native American encounters during Leif's brief visit, the Vikings in Greenland likely engaged with the indigenous population. Intriguing evidence suggests that trade transpired between Viking Greenlanders and the Thule, the ancestors of the Inuit. Ivory carvings depicting Norsemen and iron and bronze tools, beyond the Thula's capabilities, have been uncovered at Thule archaeological sites. The term Skraelings, used by the Vikings to refer to Native Americans, is believed to originate from the Old Norse word skray, meaning dried skin, possibly alluding to the animal pelts worn by the Inuit ancestors. Leif's brother Thorvald continued the saga with a second voyage to the west, setting up winter quarters at the camp Leif had established. The spring brought a fateful encounter when the Vikings stumbled upon nine natives, their canoes covered in animal skins. In an unfortunate turn, the Vikings attacked, leaving only one survivor who sought reinforcements. The ensuing battle claimed Thorvald's life, marking a tragic chapter in the Vikings' interaction with the Native Americans. Tensions continued as the Vikings, undeterred by these clashes, stayed for another winter before returning to Greenland. The years passed, and Thorfinn Karlsefni, a wealthy merchant of distinguished lineage, orchestrated a grander expedition. This venture, distinguished by three ships and a contingent of 160 to 250 men and women along with livestock, ventured farther south than Lee for Thorvald's expeditions. Their settlement in a place called Stromfjord, marked by interactions with the Skraelings, started off amicably. The two groups engaged in barter, with the Native Americans exchanging furs for red cloth and a fascinating liquid known as milk, sourced from the cattle the Vikings had brought along. The tranquility, however, proved ephemeral. The Viking colonists found themselves living on a knife's edge with the indigenous peoples. Hostilities escalated, and outright fighting became increasingly common. The tipping point came when a bull from the Viking camp broke loose, frightening a group of Native Americans. This incident triggered a chain of events, leading to an assault by the Skraelings armed with catapults. A legendary battle ensued, perhaps becoming the deciding factor for Thorfinn and his ambitious colony. Ultimately, they abandoned the site and retreated to Greenland, leaving the New World without European settlers for centuries. Despite the gripping sagas and tales of Viking expeditions in North America, the tangible evidence supporting these narratives remains elusive. The dearth of archaeological finds has left historians and enthusiasts yearning for more concrete proof. However, amidst this historical uncertainty, a few sites emerge as potential beacons shedding light on the Vikings' presence. 
Lance O. Meadows in Newfoundland, discovered in the 1960s by Norwegian couple Helga Ingstad and Anne Stein Ingstad, stands as the only confirmed Viking settlement in North America. This site unravels the remnants of eight sod houses, evidence of ironwork beyond Native American capabilities, and a boat-building frame. The strategic location suggests the possibility of Lance O's Meadows being a Viking ship repair center, bolstered by the physical evidence for boat construction and its proximity to the North Atlantic, facilitating journeys to Greenland. A poignant piece of evidence anchoring the authenticity of Lance Oaks Meadows as a Viking settlement is a small yet significant bronze pin with a ring, likely used to fasten a cloak around the neck. Similar pins found in Scotland and Ireland, all dated between 920 and 1050 AD, further solidify the Norse connection. These vestiges, though modest, affirm the Viking presence in North America. Venturing farther south, the Goddard site in Brooklyn, Maine, adds another layer to the narrative. In 1957, amateur archaeologist Guy Melgren stumbled upon an enigmatic Norse coin, sparking both fascination and skepticism. Initially mistaken for a medieval British penny, experts later dated it between 1065 and 1093, firmly placing it within the Viking Age. The surroundings adorned with a multitude of arrowheads give rise to speculations of the Vikings introducing archery to the Native Americans in the region. Historical skepticism, stemming from past Viking America hoaxes, has met the Goddard coin. Yet experts attest to its authenticity, citing the wear and tear characteristic of a coin buried for centuries. As debates persist, the coin opens a window into the intricate connections between Vikings and Native Americans, raising questions about potential cultural exchanges and influences. The mystery surrounding the Vikings in North America finds its voice in the Vinland sagas. The saga of Eric the Red and the saga of the Greenlanders, penned a couple of hundred years after the events unfolded around 1000 AD, these sagas, while differing in details, narrate the same foundational stories of Viking settlements in the New World. The sagas introduce three key places, Helluland, Markland, and Vinland, each evoking vivid landscapes. Helluland, the northernmost land of flat stones, sparks speculations about its identity, with Baffin Island in Canada's Nunavut territory emerging as a plausible candidate. Markland, the land of forests in the middle, draws hypotheses placing it in Labrador to the southeast. Finally, Vinland, the southernmost land of wine, aligns with modern-day Newfoundland. Adding a layer of complexity, the sagas mention Thorfinn's camp, Stromfjord, described vividly with strong currents, high tides, a natural harbor, craggy rocks, a winter sun, and abundant nesting birds. This description has fueled proposals ranging from the Bay of Fundy to Lans Os Meadows, Buzzards Bay, and even the Long Island Sound. The sagas, laden with geographical clues, entwine history with mystery, leaving modern interpreters in a quest for the Vikings' precise footsteps. The final chapter of the Viking saga in North America raises profound questions about their abrupt departure. Why didn't these fierce warriors, who left an indelible mark on history, establish roots in the New World? Theories abound, with speculations ranging from insufficient resources during expeditions to conflicts with hostile Native Americans. One prevailing theory ties the Vikings' exodus to climatic shifts. During the 11th century, when Leif, Thorvald, and Thorfinn explored the New World, the climate experienced a warmer phase known as the Medieval Warming Period. This period featured warmer summers and reduced Arctic sea ice. However, the climate subsequently shifted, ushering in the Little Ice Age from the 12th century onward. Plagued by dropping temperatures, ice accumulation, and impassable sea routes, Greenland and Iceland faced adversity. Historical evidence points to food shortages and plagues, contributing to the decline of Iceland's population from 150,000 to 50,000 between 1250 and 1700. As the Vikings' stint in North America dwindled into legend, their legacy persisted through sagas, a lone settlement, a pin, and a coin. The allure of what might have transpired had they stayed lingers, a testament to the captivating enigma of the Vikings in the Americas. The comments section invites modern speculation on this ancient puzzle, inviting audiences to ponder the question, did the Vikings truly set foot in the Americas? As the curtains fall on this history roar exploration, the echoes of Viking exploration resonate through time, leaving an indelible mark on the tapestry of North American history.